Oh, for fuck. Here we are again, boys. For the third time in a row between FNCS weeks, the zones have changed once more. Now, we'll talk about why that's a bad and a good thing at the same time, but let's talk about the positives first. Let's talk about what changed and what impact that has on the current heel off and what you can expect going into the FNCS going this weekend. So let's talk about the first changes that happened in terms of zones, and then we'll talk about the heel off changes afterwards. Zone number eight now moves itself 150 meters. Now, for those that don't know what zone eight is, zone is a zone that is essentially what used to be called half and half. So... Zone 8 has gone from 75 meters to 150 meters, essentially doubled. Now, the wait time is now reduced as well by a few seconds, which means that the zone essentially moves faster and further. Now, the reason why that's a bad thing for most players that are probably watching this, it means that if you don't have a katana, if you don't have ODM gear, and more specifically, if you don't have a purple katana, you're basically screwed on 99.9% .9 of these rotates because that thing is far. So not only do you have to travel, it's such a long way for the big half and half now. Now this, essentially we call it zero zeros now, is out of zone and further. So basically nobody gets zone anymore. Now ninth moving, which is your first moving zone, is no longer touching on the edge. It's now gone another... 30, wait, 25, 45 meters in total away from you in that first moving zone. So it's gone from 75 meters to 120 meters. And then again, the time between the waiting and the zone moving has reduced itself as well. The last and the final change is to zone number 12, where the maximum shrink time is now 80 seconds. So the zone doesn't move further for final moving zone, but the shrink time is now about 80 seconds. So essentially, the game has been extended by 20 more seconds in terms of final moving zone, which adds more time for people to fight, more time for people to box fight, and essentially kill each other before that heal off occurs. Now let's take a look at zones 8 and 9 first. And why that's important. So looking at it from an in-game perspective, you can see that essentially none of the players will be able to get zone anymore. And what that means is that everyone has to essentially waste more mats, use more materials, rotate further in order to get into that half and half. Or essentially the zero zero zone now. So that as you can see here on this edge, if you have a max zone pool and you basically have a blue katana, you can't even make it towards that zone as anymore because it's too far for you to travel. So you need to either katana early, box up, and then katana again if you have a blue katana. Or if you have a purple katana, you should be able to make that movement easily now. But there's going to be a huge, huge shift in the RNG for certain teams. Essentially, if you land Kinjutsu, you're completely chilling because most of the zones are right there for you. In zone number 9, essentially, it's not really changed too much because most of the time, a double katana is going to put you into that zone. So it hasn't changed too much, essentially, because that old zone is kind of useless anyway. You basically have to move about half a centimeter across the line and you're inside of moving zones. But now it's being extended just slightly, but it doesn't make much of an effect, I think, overall in terms of heal off. Now, the biggest change, obviously, like we talked about before, was that zone 12 moving. And essentially, what we saw in this specific game is that the majority of teams are now starting to fight out a little bit. And there's a lack of heal off. Now, two changes occurred now in the past two days. And one yesterday and one essentially today. So, the previous changes were that the splashes were essentially changed as well. Uh, they were reduced by 10%, effectively meaning that there's a 10% chance that you get splashes less in your game. So from cooler boxes, from floor spawns, from chest spawns, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, there's a 10% chance overall. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot, but going back to the Noble games that we watched yesterday on stream, it does seem like that the amount of people that went to heal off is even lower than usual. Instead of getting our Storm Sickness heal off, we barely got any sort of that because there's a lack of splashes, which means that people can't travel deep into zone anymore because they're just relying on the slurp juices now. On top of that, the secondary change on top of that was the pizza changes. Essentially meaning that pizzas were vaulted, so you can't get pizzas anymore. You can't get those guaranteed splashes from the pizza boxes. 
which essentially means that you're kind of screwed in mid game if you take a lot of damage so you have to be very considerate in the health that you have in mid game because otherwise you're going to be taking a lot of damage and you have nothing left into those final moving zones so what is the nice part of it is essentially we're seeing a lot more teams force each other to fight we saw people forcing into the boxes in that final moving zones because they know that the three splashes that they have in final moving isn't enough to justify running away from storm or going into a, a py to try to find a mid mist you just can't triple katana anymore out of zone to find your old heal off base because you don't have enough to sustain furthermore games are a lot less stacked now because you're essentially forced to fight for your caches in order to get those slurp juices because of the lack of sla uh because of the lack of splashes over on the game most teams are running around with minis and big pots they don't have splashes anymore so those caches are priority number one for most of these teams now. And effectively, if you don't have a slurp juice going into moving zones, your game is essentially over. So now we have two things added on top of each other that are very high in RNG. You need to be able to get a purple katana guaranteed in order to do well because of the moving zones. And you need to get a cache and fight for a cache essentially in order to make it far in those moving zones because you don't have any quick healing. You don't have anything to play heal off anymore. The splashes have been reduced. Now, those changes are good, right? These are changes that have effectively changed heal off, has made it less likely to occur. Even, with, even if we did see it in the boy girl tournament yesterday, we did see some games go towards some sort of heal off. And if it happened in a co tournament, then when going into pro scrims and pro practice, then the pros will probably try to adapt a little bit more and we'll probably still see some sort of heal off, but it's a lot less and it does feel a lot healthier overall. But I want to direct this to something that's an even bigger issue in this situation, and that's the changing of zones mid FNCS. Now, changing zones for the better is a good thing, right? We want things to be balanced. We want things to get changed before FNCS starts, or at least before an FNCS week starts. FNCS has been going on for two weeks and we've had multiple changes, but we want things to be fixed before those things happen, right? But the slippery slope we get ourselves into now is... Essentially, we can see that Epic is very notably changing zones at a moment's whip. If there's something that they don't agree with, aka heal off, they're changing it. Now, the problem becomes now is what happens next season? Next season, we won't have katanas, we won't have ODM gear, we'll probably have some sort of other movement item. Or, maybe we have a zero movement meta, who knows? So does that mean that zones are going to be changing every single season again and again and again because the meta changes? Is that a problematic thing for Fortnite? Absolutely. I feel like it is. Every single zone changing. You know how confusing that has to be for a viewer to watch that? It must be boring as well because, I mean, if you don't understand how the, how the game works, it's too chaotic. Then how can you enjoy the gameplay, the storyline, the things that are happening on your screen when everything is new to you? Now, this does create a bigger skill gap in terms of pro players because they have to adapt, they have to scrim, they have to be smart and learn how these zones play. But at the end of the day, the viewing experience is one of the biggest and most important things because that's what drives the Fortnite competitive scene. Having to change zones every single week of FNCS as a casual Fortnite viewer that doesn't live in the Fortnite ecosystem. Oh man, you must be you must be confused every week for sure. The other issue is the zone changes take so long to get approved, right? If the zone changes were instantly right before a season drops, after pro skills, after the feedback we give to Epic Games gets inputted, then that's completely fine. But it seems like more than likely everyone, every single update and change needs to get some sort of approval process, right? Otherwise, they would have happened at the start of the season. So these things are slowly but surely getting changed throughout the FNCS. And that is absolutely. So, yes, the zone changes are good. Two thumbs up. Very happy. But it causes a bigger issue overall here to where... Fortnite's going to be adapting every single season, whether we like it or not. And if we keep changing these zones constantly, and constantly, and constantly, adding a band-aid solution to bigger problems, the overall health of the game itself is just going to be going down and down and down because nobody can understand what the hell is going on. Just something to think about with these zone changes, but you know, there it is in a nutshell. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Uh, we're uploading constantly now. We're back completely, boys. And a vlog of whatever the hell I do is coming out sometime this week. So make sure you uh, look forward to that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.